all these amazing things and tell us about whether there's life or whether Einstein was right and so on. So how are we going to build a telescope like the SKA? Hang on, it's gone a bit weird. Can I do the... Can I do the PDF? It messed up the... It's actually, there's some physics to it, but it's quite a lot of engineering and there's a lot of grunt work and, and metal work and so on. So, what are we going to do? Well, I don't know whether you gathered, but radio telescopes are lots of separate dishes, okay, on the ground. And, and so you see these big arrays and maybe they've got 10 or that kind of thing. So, whereas in the optical and infrared, you're either in space or you're on the ground with one big mirror, one big shiny mirror. So. So think about this, okay, we're going to start with a big metal ditch that's 75 meters in diameter. Okay, this is one in England called the Lovell Telescope. And it's very expensive to build a big piece of metal, okay. And you need to get it with a very fine surface across the whole, the whole range. So that's one reason why we want to break it up, smash it up into pieces. So we start off with a single dish here on the ground, and we've got a, a mirror here, and we reflect the light comes in along here and reflects off the, off the mirror, off the metal dish, into the receiver here. So let's smash it up, okay, we built this big expensive dish, let's start breaking up into little pieces, okay, so we're just going to put holes all the way around. It's still basically going to work the same because most of it's not whole, most of it's still bits of metal. And then this is where you have to sort of leap a bit in your mind to the radio because in, in uh, the optical, you'll have a camera, you'll have a CCD chip, like in your digital camera or your phone and so on, to do the detecting, or in the old days of photographic plate. But in the radio, we use antennas, okay? So they're just things like TV antennas. They can be as simple as a piece of wire with a little um, detector on, connecting it to some electronics. Okay, that really is, that really is how it started. Um, and, and a lot of it is still like that today. So what we're going to do is replace our receiver with, with some electronics here, this blue cross, and then some wires. So the light now, the radio waves come in and then they hit here and they reach, reach our little antennas that we're going to put here and here. Then we've got electronics coming into our receiver here. But why keep, the, why keep the electronics up in the air? Why not just put the electronics on the ground, okay? So we'll take the take the electronics and we'll put it down on the ground and we connect our wires here. So you can't see this very well. This is a radio telescope um, with eight antennas on an old railway track actually. And we've got three more here, but in here there's a little hutch with all the electronics in. So it's a shed that's got the computers in that allow the essentially the different antennas to talk to each other. And you take the voltages from the different antennas and you combine them. And it's that information that lets you um, synthesize a telescope that's as big as the original one. And I'll explain why we need to do that in a moment. So if we put the electronics on the ground, why not put the pieces on the ground as well, okay? So we'll just drop the bits of metal onto the ground. And then let's do that for the whole thing. We'll put all of the pieces on the ground. Looks a bit funny, doesn't it, right? <laughs> so, so let's replace the pieces with proper radio dishes, okay? So this is where it all comes from. These are the different radio telescopes. We've ended up with a radio telescope that effectively covers the same um, diameter as the original one, but, but using much cheaper systems, using something that's replicated. They're all the same, so you can design one and then just roll it out. Um, you can have them on all different places. You can have them in different continents, even. Um, OK, so this is called a dish, and they can be quite small, or they can be quite big. They can be as small as a meter or something. We, they can go up to probably the largest ones of this type for about 25 meters in diameter. So, um, so that's that. And then you combine all the signals together, the light comes in, combine all the signals together in your little hutch here. I don't know what's next, what's next? Okay, so you just saw the clock speed in your phone, maybe, um, the check, or the same transmission frequency as your, um, as your cell phone. And uh, it's going to have maybe a thousand of these dishes spread out over the desert. And each of them are a sort of 50 meters in diameter. Okay. And they're all um, come together. So the, 
the thing is the square kilometer, so the name isn't the total amount of area that the thing is spread over. It's the collecting area. So you have to add up all the dishes, the areas of the dishes, and that's a square kilometer. It's not that the thing is spread out over geography of a square kilometer, because you've got the gaps, right? And actually it's spread out over a much larger area, I'll show you. Um, yeah, okay. So here's, uh, here's the equation for the day. Um, and this is explaining basically why does it need to be a square kilometer array? Why does it need to have such a large area? So you might just want to drop this down in case we need it for the exercise. And so this is the sensitivity, okay, which is how faint you can see. So in other words, if you keep looking for a long time, um, what's fuzz, what's noise, and what's a real object? If you look for longer, you're going to see more objects popping out of the noise. Okay, um, just like taking a longer exposure with your digital camera or something. That is proportional to <coughs> the physical temperature of the receiver. I'll, I'll say this again in a moment. Over the area of a dish times the number of dishes times the square root of the bandwidth times the time. Okay, so on the top, temperature. Well, what does that mean? That means that these little, the radio antennas that you take, the bits of wire, you actually cool those down using a fridge, a very efficient fridge. You cool them down to minus 250 degrees centigrade. So about 25 Kelvin, something like that. And you have these out in the desert and they're there pumping away and, and you've done some good engineering to make sure that they don't keep warming up. If they warm up, it'll take a couple of days for you to cool them down again because you have to pump out the, you have to make them vacuum inside so that you can pull them down. So, so the colder the thing, the more sensitive it is, because you've got less noise to battle with, okay? So, so in the desert, we've got these very cold islands of, of, of fridge bits. And then, the area of the dish, okay? So the bigger the dish, the more, the bigger the light bucket, the more photons you're collecting, okay? So to get more sensitivity, you just make the dish bigger, and you're going to pick up more light. And then, same thing, if you want to pick up more light, then you have more dishes, so that's why we have so many of them. Okay, so um, taking these two together, the area of one dish, and then the area of all the dishes, and that's just, that's the square kilometer, so that's where that comes in, okay. Because you can do so well on temperature, but most telescopes can get down to this temperature again. So that means that when SKA comes along, you can't, you can't go 10 times colder because it's hard in engineering terms. So the only way to get there is with this, by just rolling out more often. Does that make sense? Okay, so you kind of reach a limit, and this is the only thing left you to increase, which is where SKA comes in. Okay, so time. If you want to see fainter, you look for longer. Okay, that's that. Um, then there's this thing called bandwidth, and that's basically the number of um, wavelengths or frequencies that you can look at at the same time. Okay, so it's like your light bucket in, in area, you make the dish bigger, but it's doing it in frequency this time. So, so it's like listening on different radio stations at the same time, rather than just listening to one, and you can pick up all that extra information at the same time. Okay, so if you make that bigger, you make it wider, you listen to more radio stations, same time, then you pick up more information, i.e. you get there quicker. Um, okay, <coughs> so that's that. And you might want to check this. What area in football pitches is a square kilometer array? Because I can, I'm not sure about that. I think it would be simple, but it depends on the size of the Okay, so that's the area. Now, why spread them out then? So I think you had a talk on telescopes a few weeks, maybe months ago and um, came across the idea that the resolution, so the close, the finest two things that you can separate is the wavelength over the diameter of the bit of the, of the telescope. Now remember in this case, the effective diameter for a radio telescope is the distance between the dishes, it's not the diameter of a dish. So, so if you consider the two furthest ones, okay, <coughs> that's going to be our diameter. So to get the same resolution, because uh, so we're going to keep the resolution fixed 
and the wavelength is different between optical and radio, which means that the diameter is going to have to be different. And radio is longer wavelength than optical, so we're looking at frequencies that are sort of centimeters, like microwave. Microwave is a subset of radio, that's centimeter wave. Um, and um, radio goes up to meters, or tens of meters, or hundreds of meters, or even kilometers in wavelengths. So if you think optical is sort of nanometers, so maybe this is, um, if this is a million times larger, then this has to be a million times larger as well, so that they cancel out, so we can keep the same resolution. Okay. So in other words, you've got to have these um, millions of times further apart than your resolution was on the same thing. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's why we push them apart over a big area. Okay, where's this? What country is this? No, it's the sea you've got that wrong. <laughs> okay, so we're down here. My geography is terrible. We're down here. This is Carnarvon. Has anyone been to Carnarvon? No. I have. <laughs> so this is the Peru. And there's not a lot there, okay? There are about six sheep and some mountains. And then there are these really cool little bird's nests that sit on the, <laughs> the pylons and stuff. And, and the old dirt road. There's actually a runway. So the SKA is being built here. And it has its own runway. So you can take a plane and an hour you're there. It's quite nice. So you, you take off from Cape Town International Airport and it's like, whoa, lights everywhere and landing strips. And you arrive and it's like a dirt track and they have to fly once to clear the sheep and then once again to... Fine, <laughs> 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 Worked into that um, okay, so and so why are we out here? Why do you think we're out in the desert? Sorry. Yeah. What does isolation give you? Light. Yeah. Yeah. So so the thing about radio is that it's sort of like in the radio is light, but. Um, radio telescopes, you know, if your light bulb's on, um, it's not bothered really by the sun. You can see the sun with a radio telescope, but actually it's not, it's not a massive deal unless you're looking straight at it. That means that you can observe with a radio telescope day and night. So it's not light per se, it's more interference. So it's things like TV towers and mobile phones and Wi-Fi routers and microwave ovens, cell phones. Uh, car ignitions, okay, so when you start your car, the spark plugs and all that sparkling gives off um, radiation that, that you could pick up with a radio telescope. Lightning as well, not even a direct hit, just having lightning going on. So it's those sorts of things, okay. So there's a huge, the minister, the lady Pandor, has designated a huge area of the Karoo to be radio quiet, so you're not even allowed Wi Fi. Um, so everything's got to be kept to minimum to support this project because, uh, and there always will be a little bit that you can't get rid of, but you want to keep it to a minimum. You want to get rid of it and then deal with what you've got left rather than having it all there and trying to deal with all of that stuff. And then there are some other advantages of being here. So it's dry, that means there's less water. So you can actually see water in the radio and it gets in the way. So if you're in the desert, it's drier, so there's less, um, less water and you've got a better chance of, of you, your temperature comes down, you've got a better chance of seeing what's going on. And also it's high, it's slightly high, I think it's a thousand meters maybe there, I'm not sure. Um, which isn't as high as you can get in, in Hawaii or in Chile or something, but, um, or even Sutherland I think, but, which is where the optical telescopes are here. But it means that there's less atmosphere to look through. So you've got less atmosphere, it's got less water in it, and you've got less of this um, interference going on. Okay. If you don't like fine, you can try it, it's nine hours. But... So, I think I said SKA is an international, well, hang on, we'll get to that. So what's there at the moment? So this is what the question was alluding to earlier. So this telescope is called CAT-7. So the Kourou Array Telescope, and there are seven of them. So it's seven dishes connected in the way I was telling you before. So there's a box with electronics that allow them to talk to each other. Where do you think the box is in that picture? 
Okay. It's way down the road and behind the mountain here because the because the box of electronics generates interference. So you want to have it hidden behind a mountain. And that's how sensitive these guys are. Okay. You can really mess your own you can mess your own experiment up by not taking care of what it's doing to itself. So we've got these seven dishes there at the moment, and this is a sort of, I don't know whether they call it a pathfinder or a precursor, but it's, this was a prototype, okay? South Africa had never really done this before, so, um, so we said, let's go ahead and we'll build this engineering test bed, and um, it turns out it's doing great science on its own, okay? So this is about five years old, um, and it was never intended to do science. It was just intended to train engineers in how to build telescopes, and um, and it's it's going ahead. Now this is great. It's supposed to. I don't think you can see the best of it, but have a look on the web if you can find it. This is called Meerkat, so more cat, okay? And uh, this is the galactic plane behind, and then this is one of the dishes, the first one, and it's going to be. 64 dishes, so it's just a copy of this, roughly, but 64 of them, not seven. And the first two are up, maybe three. They have very stringent testing, and once once they sign them off, then they can start rolling them out quite quite quickly. And so by next year, they'll have 32, and I think 64 by 2017, something like that. So it goes like a real ski jump. Um, and the office is in. Um, Pinelands, next to Vincent Pelosi, I don't know whether you've seen, there's a big square building, um, and it's called the park, and it says SKA South Africa on the side, SKA Africa, and in there, there are about 100 engineers working on this project. It's a billion rand project. So, and the government's heavy into it, so there are lots of jobs, and you are, we're still your funder. So then, SKA 1, SKA Phase 1, will be built around 2020, that's a massive international project. And that's going to be 256 or so of these. So they'll build meerkats, so that for will. And then the other guys will come on board and roll out the same technology. And then the full SKA, maybe 2025. But I'll come on to that in a So it's not just South Africa, okay? It then extends over Africa. So out to here, Mauritius. Madagascar. What's that one? Ghana. Ghana, I thought so. Is that Kenya? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Moving. 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 Okay. And they're on these spiral arms, and that's because the Earth rotates, and then it sort of flattens out once you take your long exposure of all sorts of stuff out. But it's not just South Africa or Africa, it's the whole world. So these are all the countries involved in SKA. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of where the telescopes are, I said it's actually three telescopes, it's not, it's not one. So the other one's in Australia, and it's the same deal over here in Western Australia. And then you've got these spiral arms that go right out to New Zealand. And then, and then other countries have invested in different ways. Some will provide scientists, some will provide engineers, some will just provide money. Um, America's not in it, that's interesting. China is in it. <laughs> India's in it. And the headquarters are going to be in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in Italy. Sociological and political. Because countries put in money and they want to say, well, we want the headquarters, otherwise we won't give you the money. It doesn't matter that they're in different parts of the world. So the whole of SKA is about 2 billion euros, so 30 billion rand. Okay? And 20 countries sent you to. So it's a massive project and it's really exciting and it's really cool. I don't know whether you know about the Large Hadron Collider and the CERN that discovered the Higgs boson. Okay, that's, it's sort of that level of... Level of um, in fact, not even. Radio astronomy is very good value for money. You get a lot of science for your, for your RAM. Um, then the other thing that really amazes me is that it's going to generate 10 times today's internet traffic from one, from two places, okay? And then half of that's going to be coming through Cape Town. So companies like Google and Amazon and IBM are all over it because they're trying to work out, well, how are we going to do it? If we can do that, then we can do anything, fundamentality. So they're getting really interested, and we can use their computers and stuff like that. Um, and they're really forcing SKA to try and get involved. But that's the big thing. So for this amount of money, you can buy yourself an SKA. You can engineer it. You can build it. You can get it out there. Um, but analyzing the data is no one knows how we're going to do it. It's going to just spew out data, and we'll be analyzing it for decades. So 
that's what you like doing, then come and join us.